you aren't allowed to walk on the main road, you have to take the walkway that they've built. The walkway conveniently takes you to where the gift store is and also the ice cream shop. So guess where we stopped? Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Texas sea salt. It's actually gelato, not ice cream, but it is very delicious on a hot Texas day. <laughs> We're wrapping up two days of fun and camping and hiking at Garner State Park, one of the busier state parks in Texas. And I think we now need two days to recover. Man, that was on an unexpected busy two days. I think because of the types of activities and the types of hiking here that we weren't really expecting out of Texas. <laughs> Garner State Park is very popular, very busy in the summertime. We checked in with one of the rangers here and they said that, uh, well, we're here, what, in the very beginning of March, March yeah. and uh, their campsites are booked up all the way into July, she said, at least once you hit the busy summer season. Uh, and, and so that's something to keep in mind if you're going to come here. But I can see why it's popular. There is something here for pretty much every member of your family if you wanted to bring them out here. Garner State Park was opened in sometime in the 40s, uh, but it was constructed by the CCC through the 1930s and early into the 1940s before it opened. So there are a lot of buildings and construction here from the CCC. From the dance hall and pavilion, which are really cool, and where they still have dances in the summertime, to what's now the state park police headquarters that used to be one of the residences and then all the way down to the trail bollards and the markers and other things throughout the park so just keep your eye out if you're here for all the things constructed by the ccc uh, garner state park was named for what's his first name Jack, Jack, yes god how did you remember that <laughs> how can you forget when somebody's name is cactus okay. jack <laughs> is there anything more texas than cactus jack are we still rolling, or do I need to start that over? Oh, you pick up where we left off. Okay. Governor State Park. No, I can't. So I'm laughing. <laughs> just, just keep rolling. This matter. All right. Garner State Park was named for Cactus Jack Garner, who was actually vice president under FDR for his, I think it was his first term. Nobody ever knows the vice presidents, but Jack was from this area. He was from Uvalde, and so which is right nearby where this park is. And so it was a nice tribute to him when they opened the park. As with many areas that we have found in Texas, this land was actually settled by German immigrants. There were actually two families that got along very well as neighbors and friends and, you know, had a huge tract of land out here. And then unfortunately, I think they said it was during the Great Depression, mm -hmm. things got very bad and they ended up selling the land to the state. And so the state's had it for quite a while now and then was able to turn it into a state park. And they have done a tremendous job here. I mean, there are so many different things to do uh, it's just a huge laundry list. If you like the river, there's fishing, there's kayaking and boating. Uh, you can bring your own or you can rent the equipment that's already here. They have little paddle boats that you can go out and people were doing those today. It was a very popular activity. There is a mini golf uh, <laughs> that you can play here. There's the, the store with ice cream. There's dances here on the weekends. Uh, there's just, I, it just seemed like a lot of things to do for folks. You can bike, you can hike, and we'll get into the hiking in a minute. Um, and of course, if you want to stay for a while, there is camping available here and that runs the gamut too. There are 513 campsites. That does not include all of the shelter camping, the tent camping, the cabins that you can rent. And so there's got to be close to almost maybe quite 600, probably not that many, but pretty close between 500 and 600 ways to camp at this park. Which is a lot. That means they're cramming a lot of people into this park. But it's a huge park. So you never really feel like you're on top of each other. I would say Texas did a good job in this park like they do in most of the state parks we've been in, where you don't feel like you're right on top of your neighbor for the most part. It depends on what section you're in. If you go to camp here, make sure you do your research, though, for all the different loops in terms of where they're at, because some are right down by the river, some are quite a ways out. Even if you're away from the river, you seem to have a pretty good view of the mountains and in hill country around here. Um, well, and, and I think when you say by the river, a lot of them are along the river. It's just you're not by the activities, like you're not by where the boat rental is, because our camps site was right by the river, but we were not by the activities. Yes. So there's that too. There are different places to be within, whether you want to be on the river with activities or on the river, but away from everybody. So that's there. So really do your research in terms of the loop location, but also the type and the size of site. There's a huge mix of sites in terms of 
electricity and water being available or not, whether it's 20 and 30 amp or whether there's 50 amp available, uh, the size of the sites, both the width and the length seem to vary quite a bit within loops. So, you know, do your research online. They have a lot of information there. And if you're not sure, call ahead and check with a ranger and see what they recommend for what you've got in terms of rig. Well, speaking of rigs, quite frankly, this is a tenter's paradise. Well, in terms of the fact that there are way more tents, people tenting than there are people camping in RVs. That's different. These are cute little shelters. They're not cabins. Um, I don't think they're, you're expected to sleep in here. You're expected to set a tent up. But this is great. So if it is raining or inclement weather or... I suppose if it was storming and you wanted to throw your sleeping bag in a cot in there, but this is just a nice alternative so that you can have indoor like cooking and getting dressed and all that kind of stuff, but still have a tenting experience. I, I like that. I mentioned earlier about the hiking. That is a huge draw here. And there are a ton of different hiking trails taking you to lots of different places. And we shot highlights along the way. So we're going to take you along for our adventure and we're going to tire you out just as we got tired because it was a very steep and strenuous day and we are very tired at uh, two days actually of climbing but we had a lot of fun before you head out hiking make sure you grab your state park hiking map because there are about 20 trails in this park many of them intersect they go all over the park they're all different lengths they're all different difficulties uh, what's nice about this map is it not only is it color-coded with a description of all of them on one side but then you've got your points of interest on the other. So you do not want to go anywhere without this map so that you don't get lost and you don't miss the cool things there are to see along the way. But lots of trails, lots of adventure. We just came off the Blinn River Trail, which was recommended by one of the rangers. And it came right off our campsite, which is great. And it takes you right along the river and like literally right along the river so that you can get in. Uh, go fishing if you want to, you know, stick your toes in the water, look for some little fish. It was really, really pretty, definitely rocky, and you are going uphill as you're climbing if you're coming, I guess, from the campground. But um, it was very peaceful and serene, and it was a very nice hike. I'm standing in front of what was the original entrance to Garner State Park, built by the CCC in the 1930s. It's now been closed off, and the only way to get here is to hike up Old Entrance Road, which is now a, it is paved, but it is now walking only to get to the original entrance. Here at the Old Entrance, there are four different trails that connect here. So once you get to this point, then you can keep going in multiple different directions. So we're going to check that out and see what other trails we can find. Um, but I definitely encourage you to get to this part because it is historic. And I think that everybody should check out the CCC features at this park. One of the unique features here at the park are these trail hiking bollards, which were created by the CCC, and this is how they marked the trails. And there are a handful of these still scattered around the park from the 1930s and 40s, so that's really cool. Much different than the blazes that we're used to today, which are usually like up in the trees, but uh, they had these little footprint signs, and I'm not sure what the little green circles are. You see those painted, so they must have meant something at a time. But anyways, just really cool and really unique. One of the trails you can take from the old entrance is Old Horse Trail. A lot of old trails and things here. Um, well, this is an old park. It is an old park. <laughs> uh, no, this was a really neat trail. It's um, You start from the old entrance, you have to go up Foshi. Just a little piece of Foshi, which is pretty steep and rocky going up. So that's a pretty good workout. But then you're kind of winding your way around this old horse trail, which is also rocky and it's loose at times. It's really narrow, but it's really pretty back in here. So I, I like that. And then and then you actually come out and you reconnect with old entrance road uh, back further down the mountain a little bit. So I, I thought it was a neat trip. Yeah, I, we haven't seen anybody out here. It's relatively short, but it is a little bit steeper and narrower in parts because, well, it was the horse trail. Um, it said you were going to have some really cool views of the Frio Valley. One star, too many trees, can't really see the valley from here, but it's a nice walk in the woods, so that's okay. It's a catch-22 when nature gets in the way of seeing nature. <laughs> <laughs> but still a neat trail. Check it out. We mentioned that Old Entrance Road was paved because, well, this was the original entrance in. It's kind of hard to see behind me, but it is quite steep in spots and very not RV friendly. So while this was probably a really pretty entrance into the park at one time, the new entrance is much flatter, much more RV friendly, and much more conducive to the amount of traffic and visitors they get here in the park. But 
We do recommend walking the old entrance road trail. You can bike it, but there is a point where it says walk your bikes because it is super steep downhill uh, as you get back into the main part of the park here. But uh, yeah, this was a really neat trail. There's old Baldy. That's where we're climbing to. Looks like we got a little ways to go. Hi. We're climbing Mount Baldy. Wait, old Baldy. I don't know where new Baldy is, but we're climbing old Baldy or too old Baldy. Something like that. At any rate, the river's down there and we're way up here. We were advised by some folks that we could either take the longer, less steep route on the gravel or we could take the essentially straight up but adventurous hike and get there faster. Well, we're pretty adventurous, so we're going for the straight up route and then we'll see what happens on the way down. We might be taking the longer route on the way down, but here we go. <laughs> Disrobing at the top of the mountain because it got warm and I hike run hot, so. Clothes are, layers are coming off. Maybe not clothes, layers. <laughs> not, let's not get the wrong impression for this family friendly channel. We just got done summoning Old Baldy. And now we've come off the Old Baldy Trail. We're on the Foshi Trail to connect to another trail, to another trail, to maybe get us to a cave. <laughs> a lot of intersecting trails in this park. Yeah, and so you have to start on one, get into the center of the park, and then like this Foshi Trail that we are, we're on, or going to be on, really kind of runs the entire way through the park and a lot of trails jut off of that. Getting to the top of Old Baldy is short but steep. It's only a half a mile from the trailhead uh, down in the campground, um, but you're essentially going straight up. And there's a kind of a point where you can go literally straight up the rock or you can take the little more windy gravelly path up and around. And either or, depending on, we took one up, one down, it's really pretty when you get to the top. There's an American flag plant that they have planted at the top. So you know you're at the top when you get to the flag. Uh, and then it's gorgeous views of the Frio River and the valley around and the surrounding farmland and, and the campground and park itself. So it was pretty. I say, yeah, the flag's at the top and there's some nice views. But even along the way, there's a couple of different sort of plateaus that you can stop at, take a break. And there's some really nice views to look at there as well. Um, going up or down. Down's going to be a little tricky too because on the one trail, it's all loose gravel and still rocks and so it's hard on the knees. knees yeah. <laughs> um, so it's strenuous, but it's short. So if you can do strenuous, but for short distances, you can probably make it and there's some great views. If you can't make it all the way to the top, even like, what, a third of the way, way up? up. Oh, you started, funny. you're up pretty high and you started to see some nice views of the river below and the campground. So, I mean, it still took us an hour. It took us about 45 minutes to get to the top, but you know us. I mean, we stop, we take video, we take pictures, we look at things. So just depends. On you break you break out the binoculars. Bring binoculars. Bring the binoculars. <laughs> That's our tip for almost every video, but it, it works. So. Uh, so yeah, but Old Baldy, put that one on your list. One of the points of interest along the Foshi Trail here at Garner State Park is the Old Rock Fence. They don't really know why it's here. They don't know its origins. They said it's at least a century old. We were surmising maybe it has something to do with the two original property owners that had this. Maybe this was sort of their dividing line. They said it, they got along really well as friends and neighbors, but maybe that's why it's here. Or who knows? It's a big mystery, but it's really cool. It's three quarters of a mile long. So that's a lot of rocks that somebody <laughs> moved around and stacked into this wall. It's pretty neat to see it. We're here on the bird trail overlooking Old Baldy, which we hiked earlier, and then we hiked all the way over there and all the way around and now we're here and looking back at what we did this morning and we still got a long way to go but this is just a cool vantage point we just finished visiting crystal cave which is off of crystal cave trail that's what's behind us and we are actually almost down back to the trailhead and then we'll make our way through the park back to our van but it's been quite a trail <laughs> Everything has been quite a trail at this park. We were commenting that uh, some of these trails were actually trickier than some of the stuff we hiked in Utah. And I thought that was a pretty good trail system. That was just a lot of elevation and rocks. This was actually tricky with boulders that you're climbing over, a lot of loose rock. And so you're sliding. You really got to watch your footing around here, I will have to say. And it's, it's not that it's a lot of elevation, but it is kind of. I mean, we're up to eight. 1,500 feet, but I don't remember where we started. It is for Texas. And 
For Texas, it is. I'm just thinking the elevation gain, not yeah. the actual elevation. Well, all of these trails we've been on today uh, are not necessarily long, but they're steep. They're, and they're yeah. steep up and down, so you're <laughs> dealing with that. And a lot of the, the limestone and stuff that's around here, it's so eroded and worn down from people hiking on it, it's really slick. Yeah. So you got to really watch your footing. I made a comment that you can't really let your mind wander when you're hiking on these trails. But worth it. This one was strenuous, um, but it was worth it. Right, and we actually came off of this one from Bridges... No, there's no looped trail here, totally looped trail. They're either out and back or they're like horseshoe shaped. So your start trail and your end trail are not in the same place. So that gets a little tricky when you're trying to figure out, well, where do you want to go and how far do you want to go and where's your car and whatnot. So we're actually going to skip a trail that we were going to do because that would have put us, actually ended up us on the other end of the park from where our car was. And we said, forget it. We're going to go enjoy the river. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to come out of this trailhead. We'll actually walk down more of the, the main road through the park, end up back where our van is parked which would be at the old baldy trailhead where we started this morning uh and then yeah grab a blanket maybe go sit down by the river yeah if you are going to crystal cave do take a flashlight it says that on the map but i want to note that you actually do need a flashlight because once you get down in there it is pretty dark and it's crystal cave for a reason i, I don't know if it's quartz or whatnot that's up in the, the in the rock uh, but it does sparkle but you're going to need a flashlight to see it, and you're going to need a flashlight to kind of see your way around once you're down in there. So don't forget that. Headlamp, flashlight, something to that effect. Yeah, something to that effect. Something better than what's on your phone, I Yeah, would I would think so, yeah. Yeah. But all in all, I like this trail. It was good. Yeah, the, uh, and all the trails we've done on have been really nice here. Phew, that was a lot of hiking. But you don't have to recover like we do, and that's why we're going to get in the car and drive home and rest. But... If you've been to Michigan, if you're familiar with Ludington State Park, or if you've seen our video on Ludington State Park, that's what this park reminds us of because it really is huge. It has something for everybody. There's so many ways to camp here. There's so many activities. And so I think that this would be a great park for families or for couples or solos because there really is something for everybody at this park. And it is a wonderful park. Ludington is a great example, and I'll put a link to the video if you haven't seen that. Take a look at it, because I even mentioned that while we were hiking. The fact that in peak season, it's going to be busy here. There's going to be a lot of people. It's going to be a lot of activity, but very much like Ludington, there's a reason it's popular. Yeah. There's so much to do here. So if you get a chance, check out Garner State Park. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.